Okay, uh, we're going to do some Game Maker Q&A time, and uh, I've got this question. Uh, how do we work with keys? And the idea was have one key for a treasure chest. When you open the treasure chest, out pops a key for the door. So you can't get through the door without the key to the door, but you can't get the key to the door until you've unlocked the treasure chest, and you can only unlock the treasure chest with the key. So... I like that because now I get to practice this whole key concept twice. So um, there are so many different ways you can solve this, and I immediately want to go to Game Maker language because I really like Game Maker language. However, I want to, for those that are uncomfortable doing it, I want to walk it through the other one. So we need to get a key for a treasure chest, which means we need a treasure chest. And we need to have a locked door, so we need to rethink all of our sprites. So let's create some sprites for that and see what we've got in the area of keys. Well, before I even find the key, I found my chest that the lock is open. And, whoa, what did I just do? I did not mean to select it just yet. I wanted to kind of walk through. We have a chest. Uh, we have one that's uh, locked and closed, and then one that's locked and open. So let's just go ahead and add those in. So we'll do the chest closed. So that's sprite chest locked, we'll say. Uh, we'll click OK, and then let's add another one. Here, what I'll do is I'll just speed up grabbing all my sprites. So now I have my three sprites. I'm going to use an object for each of those, and then we can do our coding. Now, if you're an astute observer, you will note I only created one object for the chest and two keys. And you may be saying, hey, why do you have two sprites, one for a chest locked and one for a chest open, when you only have one object? Well, that's because it's one object, right? We can change sprites anytime we want. So that's one of the things that we are going to do. Okay, so uh, the last thing I want to do is change my door sprite to have a lock on it. So I'm just going to edit that real quick, and let's hope for the best. We have doors. Do we not have doors locked or open? I thought for sure we had it. I'll go look for it. Well, lo and behold, they do not have a locked door. They did have some locks. I'll show you those. They're, they're kind of like a padlock. So as you can see, we have a padlock here. So what we could do is we could have a sprite for a door and just uh, basically paste that over the top. So let's just go ahead and edit that sprite. Watch what I can do. So there's the door sprite. I click edit. I double click here. Now I'm in edit mode. And I go to edit, and there is a paste from file. So then I just look. There's padlock gold. Click open, puts the padlock right on the door to indicate it's locked. Check it, looks good to me. So you can't get through the door unless you've got the key. And that should be the golden key. And notice gold key matches gold lock. See a little extra hint there. All right, so here's the deal. Now we can uh, go ahead and start doing this. So really what's going to happen, we got a, a bunch of different objects. And um, we are not going to present the door key. We will present the chest key, and we'll present the chest in our room. And I'm just going to test it right in here. And so I'm going to grab the door. And there it is. I'm going to add a chest over here. And I'm going to add a key 
right there. Okay. So what I want to have as behavior is that when I collide with the key, I want that chest to open. When I collide with the chest, if it's open, I want to actually when I actually I can't open it until I have the key, can I? All right, so we're going to have to get a little fancy with it. Let's just go ahead and try out one idea, see if it works. So go to my object, uh, character, let's see. Let's have the chest key have a, an event. Actually, let me, let me rephrase that. Let's go back to my character object. And on create, I set this variable val to 5. I'm going to create a new variable. And I'm going to do it not with, uh, I'm going to put it in control. I'm going to drag it out here. And we're going to call this has key. And we're going to uh, has chest key. And that's going to be false. Okay, we don't have the chest key. Okay, so has chest key is very common. Um, is or has uh, as to a true false one. And it's just saying, hey, we don't have a chest key, so uh, we can't collide with the door. So now when we collide with the door, actually, we're going to set another variable for the uh, door key. And we're going to set it to false. Okay, because we don't have the door key yet. So when I collide with the door, earlier I said, if the next room exists, well, guess what? I'm not going to go to the next room if I don't have that uh, key. So, has door key equal to true. That is going to go up here. Topmost action. I'm going to use these to sort of clean this stuff up. Actually, I'll leave that there. If the next room exists, we'll go to the next room. Technically, we should have another else at the end. Actually, it's going to be this bounce. So I'm just going to copy that, paste it below. Drag it down, add these just to clean it up, make sure it's kind of clear. So if we the door key is equal to true, we're going to check to see if the next room exists. If it does, we go to the next room. Otherwise, we bounce. And then uh, maybe here, if we don't have the key, we could display a message to sort of help the user out a little bit. I'm going to drag a little, uh, is this a question or an answer? Message, yeah. The door is locked. And you can give a little hint, like I hear there might be a key in the treasure chest. So give a little hint. And, of course, that gets displayed if the door key is equal, uh, it, in this case, if it's equal to false, because that's the first check. This else belongs with that door key. So the else means he doesn't have the door key. Let's go ahead and just test that out and see if that works. And I added the door. A door is locked. And I put a question mark, so I should put a statement. I hear there might be a key in the treasure chest. Okay. And I bounced off the object. I might just have stop instead. All right. Um, okay. What did I just do? There we go. 
Door is locked. Okay, so um, we have to figure out how we're going to do, get the key. We got to get it from the chest. And so what's going to happen is um, we're going to have the same kind of thing here, uh, only for colliding with the treasure chest. Okay, we're going to check another variable, and this time the variable is has a uh, chest key. Control. Oops, wrong location. Collision with chest. Check variable. Has chest key. True. So if we have the cat chest key, then we want the door's sprite to change. And so that's here. So it's sprite other is, that means that's the chest because we collided with the chest. So that's what the other is. And then we're going to make it chest open. Otherwise, we need an else that's under control. And we're going to display a message like we did before. Looks like the chest is locked, and we'll just leave it at that. So let's just go ahead and try this out. Uh, and let me just double check the other collision with the door. Has door key, has chest key, has chest key, has door key. They're all both set to false. Let's try it again. This time we'll try to collide with the chest. Looks like the chest is locked. Oh no! I. <laughs> I remember why I did the bounce thing. Uh, I can't uncollide with that. Now it comes time for task manager. And I'm going to have to end the playing of the maze game. Yeah, I just heard a student say, oh no. Yeah, oh yeah. All right. Go back to the collision with the chest and have a bounce again that's under move and then we're gonna have to do the little uh, controls here adding this around the else anytime you have more than one command you need to use these to sort of clean it up okay so now if we have the chest key, and this turns into the chest open. Uh, technically speaking, I could have the key pop out of the chest, or I don't even need that that chest or uh, the door key option. I could just create uh, the variable. I can change this, say, has door key, and make it equal to true. So that gives me the door key by colliding with the chest. So now, in order to be able to open the chest, I need to be able to get the chest key. Uh, I should probably also put a little statement, it, you, found a, you found a key, it looks like it might fit in the door or something. And of course you can change it to say something else. Put a little comment in there. Um, so that little message, looks like there's a golden key inside, it might match a door. Now you could even ask if they want to take it or not. Uh, and then if they say yes, then you can set the variable has door key to true. So the last thing we need to do is have a collision with the chest key. And all we need to do with the chest key is change the variable has chest key to true. 
So let's just see if this all pans out and all works. I'm going to click save to, before I like crash the computer and lose all this work. So let's just test it out. Collide with the key. I should have it now. Looks like there's a golden key. It might match the door. Click OK. And my bounce is not working. There we go. I moved away. Collide with the door. I'm in the next room. Okay, so I think it's working. We need to clean it up a little bit. Uh, on the chest key, we should have a collision with the character, and we will destroy the instance. So that goes away. We need to go back to the collision with the chest on our character. We still have an issue with that. Um, oh, here's what happened. We had the chest key equal to true. We should have probably jumped back a step also. So let's add the bounce in there. All right, so this is possibly how it works. Let's just test it, make sure that's good. When I collide with the chest key, it should go away. So let's try to collide with the chest. Looks like the chest is locked. Oh, see, I'm not bouncing. I'm moving through it. There's the key. Golden key inside, and it's doing the same thing. Bounce is not working very well, but the rest is working. All right, I just solved the solution. Here's the deal. When I collide up the chest key, uh, a bouncing, actually the chest key doesn't even matter. I didn't even need to do that. So I'm gonna get rid of that. But it's colliding with the chest, um, jumped to position. This allows you to move to any location. And what I did is um, earlier, let's just say the reason why I'm doing this is you'll notice when I have the keyboard left, it sets a horizontal speed. And if I go right, it sets the horizontal speed in a negative uh, or in a positive direction. Left, it sets it in a negative direction and up sets the vertical speed. So these are just variables, vertical speed. So um, if you're moving up, you're going to have a vertical speed. If you're moving right or left, you're going to have a horizontal speed. So when I jump, when I collide with the chest, I make, I just reverse the horizontal speed, vertical speed, whatever that is. And basically, we're going five pixels in the opposite direction of the, the, the heading we had. I make it relative. And then, it, and uh, that way, it doesn't just jump to a single point. It just moves me in the opposite direction I was moving. And then I stop myself using move fixed like this. You probably also want to add these two to a collision with the door. And again, we move it up to the top. Sorry, I have to drag it up. There we go. Move this up. And then now everything should be good. This was because I was using horizontal and vertical speed for movement. A simple bounce probably would work if we weren't doing that. But now everything should work correctly. So good luck.